You got one final point? You want to... I've got a very special treat for you, and a very special surprise. You're all wondering what the very special surprise is. Katie's here. Katie's here. No, just kidding. Uh, uh, so, whenever I go to speak at different places, folks, I often like to find out what goes on behind the scenes. I like to find out the things that are happening that you don't know are happening. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that we don't realize. Trust me, this is not the first school I've been to. I know from experience. And I knew with Mr. Weisel in charge up here that there were going to be lots of things going on. And so sure enough, I went undercover. I'm talking hidden cameras and everything. No. I went undercover. And I exposed some real shocking truths. Things that you would never have imagined. I decided I wanted to find out what the teachers and the students were really doing. So the first thing I did this morning was I went to the home of a teacher. Mr. Best, you know him? I said, Mr. Best, I said, how are you feeling about today? I said, are you ready for another day of work today and everything at school? I said, you know, what are your thoughts? And Mr. Best responded by saying this. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, that takes care of that. I, I went on, I went on to Mrs. Neal's house. I thought, well, maybe a secretary's got a different perspective, you know? Maybe she's a little bit more ready for the day. And I didn't even get to talk to her because she was in the middle of talking to her husband. He was trying to persuade her that she needed to get ready to go. He kept saying, honey, you're going to be late for work. you got to go right now. It's time to go. And Mrs. Neal said this. Well, she did eventually go. But all of a sudden, she turned around, she ran back into the house, went into the bedroom, and slammed the door. Her husband said to her, what in the world are you doing in there? What could you possibly be doing in the bedroom? You had everything ready. Your, your outfit was picked out, you were all dressed, everything was going on. What could you possibly be doing in there? And she responded, I walked on, and 
I thought, well, I, I'm going to pass by the guidance office and maybe talk to Mrs. Waters. But when I passed by, she had the door closed and she was counseling a student. I couldn't tell who it was, but he was telling her his troubles. He had this to say. <laughs> I finally found out who it was, though, when I heard Mrs. Waters say, no, you were the spring fling king. Everybody must love you. And that must have made him feel better. <laughs> so I went on to Mrs. Daniel's room and I thought, I'll see how math is going. And in that class, uh, there were some students who were really protesting because they were struggling with their math. And she had absolutely no mercy. I mean, I was shocked and horrified. She had no mercy on these students. This is what she said in, in response. What doesn't kill you makes you stop. <laughs> So I went on to Mrs. Best's English class and I said, okay, how are things going here? Well, there were some students who were, who were saying, uh, we don't want to take this test that you have for us today. We want you to reschedule the test for another day. Please, we are just not ready. We need you to reschedule this test. And Mrs. Best was also absolutely relentless and she said this. She finally gave in a little bit when they said, all right, could you at least give us one night of no homework? And so she responded this way. <laughs> so I, uh, I left there and I thought, okay, what else can I, who else can I talk to? I wanted to talk to Mrs. Sollenberger. Now, Mrs. Sollenberger had been busy all day, and the last time I had tried to talk to her, she was talking to Mr. Weisel, and I thought, oh, that's perfect. Next time she goes to talk to him, I'll just follow her, and I'll talk to both of them. I mean, why not get an interview from the principal, too? Well, that went very, very bad very quickly, because I, I saw Mrs. Sollenberger, and she happened to be walking into Mr. Weisel's office. I thought, this is great. This is terrific. I'm going to talk to both of them. But when she walked in, Mr. Weisel said something that made me realize I better just leave right away because when Mrs. Sollenberger walked into his office, Mr. Weisel said this. to 
get an interview with Mr. Kuntz. You know, I mean, he's been a teacher here. Well, you know, let's talk to Mr. Kuntz. So I went up to him and I said, Mr. Kuntz, what is the biggest problem that you face as a teacher here in Santa Metal? And Mr. Kuntz had this to say. I said, look, Mr. Kuntz, I said, now I'm being serious. I said, my job is to make these kids feel good about themselves. I've got to motivate these students. I said, you got to give me something better than that. I said, do this for me. I said, what do you think about yourself and what do you tell yourself at the end of the day that really helps you to just be all right? And he said, I'm sexy. <laughs> yourself and about changing the world and my final point in order to share this point with you I have two stories that I want to tell you the first story is about Walt Disney everybody knows who Walt Disney is right either you've been to Disney World you've seen Disney movies I mean you know and I'm sure when I say the name Walt Disney that right away that stuff comes to mind his movies the parks the empire you know the whole Disney Empire I want to remind you that there was a time when the name Walt Disney didn't mean much of anything to anybody. Walt Disney was not born a king or a prince. He didn't come from a wealthy background or anything like that. No, when Walt Disney wanted to accomplish something, he had to work very hard for his dreams. And he had huge dreams. I mean, animated movies. You know, later on, a, a huge theme park. And I guarantee you, there were people that told him, it's crazy. You're out of your mind. It's too big of a dream. But Walt Disney persevered. He didn't give up. He reached for his dreams anyway, because he believed that they were his dreams, and that he deserved the chance to make them come true. Let me tell you, it wasn't all easy and it wasn't all successful, Walt Disney. As a matter of fact, did you know that the Walt Disney Company, as we know it now, was his, like, maybe third or fourth attempt? He had several failed attempts before he finally got his empire off the ground. Walt Disney's first movie, Snow White, first full-length movie, was almost a huge failure because partway through the movie, they ran out of money. A lot of people would have just taken this as a sign that it was time to just give up. Maybe the world isn't ready for animated movies. Maybe I should just get a normal job so I can support a family, so I can contribute to society. But not Walt Disney. Instead, Walt Disney started going to banks, asking, pleading, begging for money. And when they wouldn't give it to him, you know what he did? He actually took in the film reel of Snow White, showed it to the banker and said, you've got to watch this and see why it deserves an ending. And of course, ultimately, you know, the rest is history. Eventually, they lent him the money. The movie was a success. Disney had several other ups and downs. But eventually, because he kept persevering, because he kept pushing forward, he was able to pursue his dreams and to see them through. And Walt Disney is someone who has changed the world. The other person I want to tell you about is a guy you might have heard of by the name of Steve Jobs. Anybody got an iPad or an iPhone? Mm -hmm. Or a Mac computer? Any Apple products? Steve Jobs was the late CEO of Apple. Everybody recognizes that name as 
related to Apple. But guess what? There was a time when the name Steve Jobs didn't mean much of anything to anyone. 